بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی بگن ود دا نیم آف گاڈ ہو از موسٹ گریشس اینڈ مرسیفل بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز السلام علیکم ربش راہلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل لقد تم لسانی یفقہ کالی او مائی رب اوپن مائی ہارٹ ایز مائی ٹاسک My dear brothers and sisters, in a series of sessions of only 15 to 20 minutes daily, I intend putting before you an elaborate retranslation of Quran, the word of Allah, in easy spoken English, and along with it certain explanatory notes. It took me about 20 years to do this translation. by Allah's special grace and special assistance. It may be pertinent to highlight that I consulted about 12 famous Urdu translations and 4 to 5 English translations for performing this task. I have translated the explanatory notes from Asan Tarjimai Quran by Mufti Muhammad Taki Usmani. May Allah accept this effort in His great mercy. Brothers and sisters, Quran is a word of Allah revealed to His last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for the guidance of man. Go through Allah's word, beliefs are not a matter of secondary consideration. Neither is the man's soul such a non-entity that it is outcasted and left alone, thrown in the backyard at the altar of secularism. The soul is a reality, no matter or no, the most important. It is sustained by truth. enlightenment, reality, and peace by the superordinate remembrance of Allah. The maxim, if there was no God, there would be a necessity to invent one, though appealing, is inherently misleading, a non-squitter, illogical, for there is no way the invented could deny the existence of of the inventor. I say again, for there is no way the invented could deny the existence of the inventor, the creator. Allah exists. No wonder every individual soul is attracted to him in troubled waters, in moments of intense fear. Ask the soul. It knows of its creator well, looks for him, yearns to reach him. Ask the soul, the man doesn't spare time to attend to his soul and puts it, destroys it, because it before false gods, demigods, dummy gods, saints, peers, graves, etc. That is, indulges in shirk, pantheism, a mortal sin, which shall not be forgiven. Man, having passed a lifetime in this ruinous state, when he sits back at the close of the play and the banquet hall is all deserted, the futility of his journey makes him a guest of the wrong track that he had adopted right from the start. As Alexander Caesar and Napoleon are historic realities, so is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a historic reality. Those who do not take him as a prophet have the God-given liberty to do so, provided they have studied the book he brought, that is Quran. It will be apt to take the assistance of the famous French philosopher Voltaire, who said, I do not agree with the word you say. 
I do not agree with the words you say, but I shall defend till death your right of saying it. So also, when a prophet speaks, he has a right to be listened to. Quran, as such, has a right to be read. And reading as a voluntary exercise is generally understood to mean understanding, analyzing, and forming opinion and conclusions thereafter. It means one has opted to listen and consider with an open mind. We are all students of Quran, so there are certain important terms which I'd like to elaborate. First of all, to the disliking of many and ardent believers, instead of the word Allah, word God has also been used at many places. The word Allah has no substitute, no alternative. It has no plural, plurals, and the believers and the believers understand it so well that it doesn't require any elaboration or explanation. Allah is the name of the soul, the only sovereign, supreme power, and other words in contradistinction like God have only a gleam of its accurate definition to be used as a synonym. The word God is defined differently by the mankind and has plurals as well. However, word God has also been used as its precise and accurate substitute in this translation. Secondly, the word Rab has no substitute in English. It means the sole creator, sustainer, provider, the God who gives safety, complete security, the only one who runs, manages, controls everything, all the universes, and the only one who gives life and death to all his creations. Actually, the word Rab is ineffable, unexplainable. The term shirk is another word of Quran least understood by non-believers and many are believers too. It implies having, believing, attributing, co-equals, associates, shareholders, equating something, someone with Allah. Also, considering someone or something as deific, divine, venerable, honorable, as only Allah should be, is also shirk, indisputably. The creator and the creation's attributes are mixed up, intermingled, fused, and confused. There are two modes of doing it, vis a -vis the upgradation of the creation and or degradation of the creator. First, idols, angels, anthropoids, human beings, prophets, saints, peers, etc. are given the attribute or any single attribute of Allah that is creating demigods. In the second mode, Allah is denigrated, denigrated by attributing to him some imperfection like the characteristics or attributes of his creation, human beings, like God having sons, daughters, etc., idolatry, paganism, and polytheism, tyranny, believing that the sovereignty rests with people, man, majority, are all various petrifying, noisome facets of shirk. Believing that man has the authority, right, has the right authority to decide on the right and wrong of things as opposed to those ordained by Allah, implying Allah's injections are faulty, outdated, outmoded, redundant, and Allah couldn't give a system that could be followed by modern man is denigrating, lowering Allah, and obviously a blatant shirk. Establishing man as his own God, shirk is the most baleful, threatening, menacing idea that human mind 
can and can engender which Allah will not forgive unless a man repents and seeks forgiveness for having committed shirk and the fourth term is secularism the good and the evil never reinforce always substitute each other i say again the good and the evil never reinforce always substitute each other monotheism and secularism are each other's antithesis opposites the injunctions directions of quran can't be used to serve the ideals purposes modes and systems structured on secularism which is devoid of the concept of the hereafter secularism is defined as a doctrine the essence of secularism is that morality should be based solely on regard to the well-being of mankind in the present life to the exclusion of all considerations drawn from belief in god or in a future state in cambridge encyclopedia britannica 1951 with this gentlemen we begin with the translation of the quran and in that in part 1 and in part 1 the opening that is surah al fatiha the opening bismillahir rahmanir rahim with the name of allah who is unchangeably beneficent the tremendously merciful alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin all praises are for allah the rabb creator sustainer of all cosmos all worlds and all universes ar rahman ar rahim the unchangeably beneficent the tremendously merciful malik e yawmiddin only allah rabb the unchangeably beneficent the tremendously merciful is the master of the day of final judgment that is absolutely just retribution punishment or reward based on every individual's performance as demanded by quran and sunna iya kanabudu wa iya kanastain o allah none else but you alone do we worship obey subserve and you alone we ask for help ihdin as-sirat al-mustaqim give us the right path that is put us on the right path sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghzub alayhim wal zawalin the path of those whom you have rewarded not the ones who earned your annoyance that is the jews nor of those who went astray that is christians amen may it be like that exactly